Hello, Pastor Sunday Joseph Adenuga here, welcoming you to part 3 of Incorruptible Heritage. In actual fact, our heritage that we have in God is incorruptible, undefiled, and fades not away. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. The heritage that you and I have in our Lord Jesus Christ is an heritage that cannot be defiled that cannot be corrupted. That's why we call it incorruptible heritage. And that is the heritage I'm trying to show you in this series of messages titled Incorruptible Heritage. Hallelujah. Now, let's shall we pray before we start. Lord, as we start this message this, of this day, pray that the spirit of understanding and wisdom will come upon this era. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. I have talked so much about genetic heritage. Right now I want to go to another heritage called material heritage. Now material heritage. You have material heritage. You have a right to all the, the blessings of God. And boy, the God that we serve is a rich God. God is the owner of the heavens and the earth. God is the creator and the owner of everything you can see all around. And so many things you cannot see. Oh my God, this world is full of resources, inexhaustible resources, available for every human being on earth. All these things belong to your father and my father. All these things belong to your God and my God. If God is the owner of the heavens and the earth, and you are on earth, and you are his child, then you have a right, you have a right to all the heritage, all the properties of your father, since God is your father. Remember in part one I told you, quoting Matthew chapter 23 and verse 9, where Jesus said, Call no man your father on the earth. You have one father, the Almighty God. Now, if the Almighty God is your father, if the Almighty God is my father and is the owner of everything, then you and I can be a partaker of that thing that belongs to our father. Praise God. So, you have material heritage. You have a right to blessing. You have a right to prosperity. That is why God said in 3 John, verse 2, He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So, God's wish for you, for me, for every child of God, is that he prospers. God's will is prosperity. And um, because God wants you to prosper, God will support you in any endeavor you involve yourself to prosper. God will help you in any way you need help in order that your prosperity will come that's why god says the bible says i will look up onto the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the lord who made the heavens and the earth god wants you to prosper the bible says in the book of Psalms, he said god have pleasure in the prosperity of his servants now if god has pleasure that his servants prosper then how much more pleasure will he have if his children prosper you are not just a servant you are not a slave of god you are a child of god and if god wants servant to prosper then he wants children to prosper much more god desires that you prosper god wills that you prosper 
God is happy that you prosper. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. There is a power to get wealth, and that power comes from God. And God releases that power to whomsoever he wills. And he readily releases it to children. As a child of God, God will release that power to you. As I speak to you right now, I pray for you. The power to get wealth come upon you now. The wisdom to get prosper come upon you now. The ability to make word, let it come upon you now in the name of Jesus. It is well with you in Jesus' name. The Lord is happy to prosper you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply. That means that whatever you are going through, it doesn't matter. But my God. You may be going through failure right now, but my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What you are going through right now may not be palatable, but my God, whom you serve, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You may not eat last night before you slept, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, let me tell you, having said that, it is the will of God for you to prosper. I have to make you to understand that the blessings of God comes with condition. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, that all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Now, that place is saying that the blessing of God is for you, but it will come only if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, which I command you. Now, that means that there is a condition attached to the blessing. Now, you have a right to the blessing but there is a condition you must pass to inherit the blessing there is something you must do to be a, to partake of the blessing the blessing is for you you have money in the bank but you have to sign the check to get it you have to take a physical action of going to the bank to cash it now you god wants to bless you god wills to bless you but you have to do one thing or the other to get the blessing. The blessing is for you. But you have to do something to get the blessing. Now, I want you to understand. The blessing is for you, but it will not fall on you like a ripe cherry from the, from the cherry tree. No, 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 no. The blessing is for you, but it's not going to fall on you like a ripe mango from the mango tree. You have to go for it. You have to go for it. If you don't go for it, it will not come for you. Now, I want you to understand it. God wants to bless you. But there are things you have to do to get the blessing. Now, let me remind you. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 says, It becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Now, what that place is saying that he becomes poor. That means he was not poor. Because, now, let me tell you. Now, to become means to turn to something that was not. He was not, but he become it. Now, if you become something, now, now, now it's just like a paper was formerly existing in the tree as a tree. The tree was cut down, processed, and that tree became paper. Now, now, when the Bible when when the Bible says it become poor, that means that a process happened, and that process is laziness. Now, he said it become poor that deals with a slack hand or that is lazy. That is, laziness will turn you to become poor. God did not create a poor person. 
Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 says, He will become poor, whoever is lazy. Laziness is the ingredient in the soup of poverty. Laziness is poverty maker number one. Now, you have an incorruptible heritage of success, of blessing. It is for you, but you must do something. You must work hard. You, not only to work hard, you must diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Then number three, you must give to the cause of God. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, if you read it from verse 8, it said, you have robbed me. Then where, and you said, wherein have we robbed thee? In verse 9, it said, in tithes and in offering. Verse 10, it said, bring ye all the tithes into my house and prove me now herewith. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, then will cause the blessing to fall on you like rain until there is no more room for you to contain it. Blessing is for you, but you have to do certain things to get the blessing. One of the things to do is to pay your tithes. One of the things to do is to give offering. One of the things to do is to give to the poor. Giving. The Bible says, Luke chapter 6 verse 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures. Press down. Shaking together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. My brother, you have cultural heritage. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 17 verse 10. They all dying are mine, and all mine are dying. Jesus was talking to God that everything that belongs to God belongs to him. And everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to God. If this is true, and I know it is true, Jesus now went ahead and said, The glory that you have given me, I give them. I give the glory you, God, gave to me. I give it to my people. I give it to my disciples. I give it to my brothers. Now, if everything that God gave to Jesus is given to you, if they are given to me, if they are given, you have no reason to be poor. God wants you well. You have the heritage of blessing. You need to use that heritage. You need to take that heritage. You need to do it. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. You need to take your heritage by force. It is well with you. In Jesus' name. Oh, I've talked so much this time. It is well with you. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Once again, Sunday, Joseph Adenuka is my name. Pastor Sources Dimension Church. It is well with you. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the power to get well, to enter into the material heritage. Let it come upon this era now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.